These are all the new features in Apple's M3 version of the 14-inch MacBook Pro. Welcome everybody. Welcome to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and at Apple's Scary Fast event, it introduced a new version of the 14-inch MacBook Pro. But not just one version of the 14-inch MacBook Pro, it kind of introduced two versions. See, there's an entry-level version of the new 14-inch MacBook Pro, one that comes with a lower price point and an M3 processor on the inside. It's essentially a replacement for the 13-inch MacBook Pro with the touch bar and an M2 chip that Apple killed off. So I'm gonna first start off by comparing these two, showing you how this one is new compared to the 13-inch MacBook Pro, but then I'm also gonna show you what's new on the high-end version that comes with an M3 Pro or an M3 Max processor on the inside and sits alongside Apple's specced out 16-inch MacBook Pro. So depending on which machine you're interested in compared to the M2 13-inch or on the high end compared to the M2 Pro, M2 Max version, uh, we're gonna separate into two different spots in this video, so jump ahead to those sections if you need to. Otherwise, let's go ahead and compare the new 14-inch MacBook Pro with the M3 chip to Apple's entry-level M2 13-inch MacBook Pro. Starting with this basic version of the MacBook Pro, with either the M2 or the M3, Apple is shipping it with an eight core CPU. That's four high performance cores and four high efficiency cores. They both have 10 core GPUs. They have 100 gigabits per second of uh, memory bandwidth and they both have 16 core neural engines. But of course the M3 is much faster, has many other improvements. So Apple says for the efficiency cores, they're up to 30% faster than the M2 version and the high performance cars are up to 15% faster. It's a decent little bump. Additionally, the GPU has a new next generation architecture and dynamic caching that should just overall make the graphics much better. On top of that, Apple also added a new AV1 decoder to the M3. Besides the chips on the inside, the other big difference here is the design. Apple ditched the 13 inch entirely and basically just made a new lower cost version of the 14. So we're comparing a 13 inch MacBook Pro to the redesigned 14 inch MacBook Pro. If you're coming from a 14 inch MacBook Pro, not much has changed here, but coming from the 13 inch, it's definitely quite an overhaul. I mean, we're going from a 13.3 inch display to a 14.2 inch display, which is not just a larger display, but has things like the notch in the top with a 1080p FaceTime camera, older one was only 720p, and has all the other benefits that the MacBook Pros had, such as uh, 120 hertz pro motion in there, a million to one contrast ratio, 600 nits of brightness, the old one was only 500 nits of brightness, plus you have a thousand nits of sustained brightness and up to 1600 nits of peak brightness for HDR content. You might be familiar with the rest of the machine, but aside from that larger display, it's a little bit more of a boxy design. The touch bar has been banished. RIP, I love the touch bar and I'm so sad to see it go. Now the 13 inch is gone, but you get a full row of function keys, of course. Apple has plenty of ports here, so down the left hand side, you're gonna find your MagSafe 3 port, as well as two Thunderbolt 4 ports and a headphone jack. On the right hand side, you're gonna have an HDMI port and an SDXC card reader. The old version of the MacBook Pro, the 13 inch, it only had two Thunderbolt ports and a single headphone jack. Memory stays the same. You have the same bandwidth and you have eight, 16 and 24 gig options. Storage, same thing. It goes all the way up to two terabytes, but Apple now starts you at 512 instead of 256. So base storage has been doubled. Battery life has increased, which is good since it is slightly larger. Apple's gone from 20 hours of video playback to up to 22 hours of video playback time. And the new version is fast charge capable using an appropriately high wattage power adapter. Other changes, Apple has upgraded the connectivity going from Wi-Fi 6 to Wi-Fi 6E and from Bluetooth 5 to Bluetooth 5.3. Now, Apple did change the pricing here. So the 13-inch MacBook Pro started, I think, at like $12.99, uh, and the 14-inch MacBook Pro started at like $19.99. Now, Apple is starting the 14-inch MacBook Pro at $15.99, but killing off that $12.99 model. What's Apple doing here? Well, you still have the 15-inch MacBook Air that's incredibly capable and incredibly cool with a great display, and it's still powerful with the M2 chip on the inside. Apple's keeping that in the lineup, no M3 version yet, and then it's having this new lower cost 14 inch. But you get a lot for that additional money. I mean, if you were getting the 13 inch MacBook Pro before and just doubled that base storage, 
you are already getting close to $1,500. So you're still getting double the base storage. You're getting a larger display, promotion display with a higher brightness and higher pixel density. You're getting all the ports on the side, plus all the new benefits of the M3 chip on the M side. So I think this is a really good upgrade. Yes, the starting point is higher than before, but I think most people are gonna just go for the Air. And now if you just wanna go a little bit more powerful, you can go for this new 14 inch Pro, more ports, connectivity, all the other benefits that come with it. Okay, but what about the high-end version? The one that comes in space black and is comparable to the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Don't worry, there's a lot of upgrades here as well. Namely, it's got an M3 Pro on the inside or an M3 Max. These are Apple's new three nanometer chips. These are just the higher end versions that we see from the base version. It has all the other benefits that I mentioned, like the dynamic caching, it has the hardware accelerated ray tracing, um, the next generation GPU architecture, the AV1 decoder, all that is baked here into the Pro and the Max versions of the M3. If you spec it out, you can go all the way up to an M3 Max that has a 16 core CPU and a 40 core GPU. Absolutely incredible, and four more cores than the previous version had. Right now, it seems like the M3 Pro is a little bit of a letdown. Apple is really pushing more for that higher end M3 Max version. There's a bigger delta there in the performance increase year over year, or I guess same year over same year, generation over generation. But still, the M3 Max version is absolutely bonkers. There are new memory options on the high-end 14-inch MacBook Pro. It starts off at 18 gigs, but there's also 36, 48, 96, and 128 gig options available. It used to start off with 16 gigs with only 32, 64, and 96 options. If you are opting for that M3 Pro, the previous M2 Pro could only have 32 gigs as a maximum. The new M3 Pro can top out at 36. And of course, if you're going with the M3 Max, that's how you get to the 128 gig of unified memory. Storage starts off at 512, same as before. You have one, two, uh, and four terabyte options if you're going with the M3 Pro. And if you go with the M3 Max, then you can get up to eight terabytes of internal SSD storage. For the display, it has been increased in brightness. So now for your standard SDR content, your regular screen you're looking at, its basic brightness level has increased 20%, going from 500 nits to 600 nits. Notably, 600 nits is the same as Apple's Studio Display. So if you have the 14-inch MacBook Pro and the Studio Display side by side, they're gonna have the same level of uniform brightness. Finally, the new 14-inch MacBook Pro, if you have the M3 Pro or M3 Max on the inside, you can get that new space black color. It looks very cool, and Apple even says that they have put a finish on it that will help prevent fingerprints compared to the midnight version of the MacBook Airs. Those are take on fingerprints like crazy. So I'm really excited to see how this actually holds up over time. So those are the changes in both versions of the 14 inch MacBook Pro. What do you think? Do you think those are big enough changes? Are you gonna upgrade? I honestly think this is a huge deal for that base M3 version. Getting rid of that last generation 13 inch model is a huge upgrade for anyone who was on an M1, even an Intel machine, that's huge. The M3 Pro is a little bit hit or miss for me, but I'm excited about the M3 Max. I can see a lot of people specking this thing out instead of the 16 inch since it's so big. This could be just a, an amazing machine that's gonna fly off the shelves, but let me know what you guys think. Let me know down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU or on threads at Andrew Hera 941. Otherwise, stay tuned. We'll give you more details and benchmarks very soon.